Hi, Little Sprouts. I am so excited because I get to share with you one of my very favorite winter tales. This book is called The Mitten, and it was adapted and illustrated by Jan Brett. Now, adapted means that she wrote the words that are in the book, but she didn't come up with the idea for the story. This story was a folk tale. A folk tale is a story that's been told over and over again, and each time it's retold by a different author, it's just slightly different because they make it their own. That's what Jan Brett has done. She has made this book her own. She not only wrote the words, but she drew the amazing illustrations. And I think that she is one of the most talented illustrators that we have. If you look closely at the pictures, you're gonna see so many hidden details inside this story. So let's enjoy The Mitten. Once, there was a boy named Nicky who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. Now let's pause right there and I want you to take a look at the two little mittens on the side of the book. They are gonna give us clues for what's about to happen in the book. So if you look over here, you're gonna see a lady and she has some white yarn in her hand. That's a clue as to what's gonna happen next. At first, his grandmother, Baba, did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. She has a good point, doesn't she? But Nikki wanted snow white mittens, and finally, Baba made them. So do you see how the clue matched up? We saw a lady with yarn. Well, that was his Baba, and she was making him his white mittens. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first, I will look to see if you are safe and sound. But then I will look to see if you still have your snow white mittens. So off Nikki went, and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. Can you spot his missing mittens? Mitten? <gasps> right there it is. Now look here, remember I said there's a clue. Here's our clue. Anybody know what this funny little animal is? This is a mole. Let's see what happens with a mole. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. Oh, it was cozy and warm and just the right size, so he decided to stay. Right here it is, here's the mitten and here's the little mole. Here's your clue. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then that he saw the mitten and he wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think that there was room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, that's his feet, he moved over. Next, a hedgehog came shuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being one to argue with someone covered in prickles, they made room. Do you see which animal's coming next? As soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quickly let him in. Talons are the claws on a bird. And look, they're pretty big, so they're thinking, yeah, let's just let him come in. Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left. 
Oh, but when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumb. So his diggers are his claws. So they decided he could have the thumb of the mitten. That mitten is looking pretty full, but our clues show us that someone else is still coming. It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air and a fox trotted by, stopping to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel, oh, drowsy. That means tired. The fox poked his muzzle. Do you have a guess what his muzzle could be? That's his nose. He poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of room. A great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were packed as tightly as could be, but what animal would argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged to many times its size, but Baba's good knitting held fast. Can you believe a bear is gonna go in there? Now look here, somebody is still coming. Will there be room? Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wiggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the bear's great nose. Mm -hmm. Now look at our clues, guys. Here, uh-oh, Nikki's noticing, I only have one mitten. He looks a little worried in this picture. What will happen? The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Achoo! The force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. On his way home, Nikki saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. Why was it flying like that? Mittens don't just jump up. Do you remember? Because the animals all made it explode and the mitten went flying. As he ran to catch the snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First, she looked to see if he was safe and sound, and then she saw that he still had his new mittens. But look at the mittens, friends. Baba is noticing something strange about the mittens. Do you notice anything strange about those two mittens? Can you tell which one the animals went into? I think Baba might know something's wrong, don't you? Friends, I love this story and I hope you enjoyed it too. This is a fun story that you can act out and recreate at home. You can get a little mitten and retell the story about how different animals climbed inside and stretched the mitten so much until it couldn't take any more. Have fun.